Welcome to Side Hustle Rules. My name is Lou Reyes. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about seven rules that every entrepreneur should follow. And let me say this so I get a little bit of street cred here. I'm going to let you know that I, at one point anyway, I owned a chain of business-to-business magazines. I started it from scratch, built it up into a chain that was doing millions of dollars in sales. But the benefit wasn't the money or wasn't just the money. The benefit that I got from that business was the fact that I got to meet hundreds of business owners and lots of them shared with me their their secrets. They share with me their strategies, their, their problems, their success stories. They shared, of course, the rules that they follow. Doing that, I also owned a weekly newspaper. I owned a chain of business-to-business trade shows. And I also had a radio show at one point, a business-to-business radio show. So the experience that I'm going to share with you today, the rules I'm going to share with you today are from the experiences that I had running those businesses and some other businesses that I was able to run over time. And of course, I've got my YouTube channel, Over 50 TV. Some of you may recognize me from there. We've got over a million views. I've got 270 plus videos over on that channel. So today, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to focus. We're going to focus really hard on seven rules that I think that seven rules that I know every entrepreneur should follow. I'm going to share those rules with you right after this break. Come on. Well, as I said before, we took a break. I said today I'm going to share with you seven rules that every entrepreneur should follow. And let's just get right to it. I'm going to start with number one, be an innovator. You know, I don't recommend starting a business or running any business without knowing that your business has a competitive advantage over the competition. I don't want to be like everybody else. For a business for a business to be successful in, in the short and also in the long term, a business should be clearly different and obviously superior to other businesses is in the niche. You know, to launch a business or, or, or to try to build a business in a competitive environment where, where you don't have a clear advantage, it's time consuming. It's going to drain your bank account and your growth prospects. They are limited, very limited. You know, I'm going to give you a couple extreme examples of the power of innovation, and they are Steve Jobs and Elon Musk. What they accomplished with their companies is amazing. You know, both guys looked at industries that I argue were on autopilot, and they turned those industries upside down with innovative products. Now, I'm not saying, of course, I'm not saying that you need to create a life-changing product to be successful. But I am saying if you want your business, if you want your business to thrive, and if you want your business to have good, short, and long-term prospects, strive to create innovative products or services that provide innovative solutions to everyday problems. And and I'm going to leave you with this thought. It's from Tim Grover. He's the author of Relentless from, from Good to Great. Relentless from Good to Great to Unstoppable. And he says this in his book, your strategy is to make everyone else get on your level. You're not going down to theirs. You're not competing with anybody else ever again. They're going to have to compete with you. Number two, identify what separates you from everyone else in your niche and exploit the hell out of it. You know, if your business is just like every other business in your niche, your business ceiling is already defined. It's defined by somebody else. It's been predetermined. You know, it's not likely that you're going to go any higher. And for some people, yeah, that's okay. And I've got no problem if you're happy with mediocrity. But just know that you're susceptible to downturns in the marketplace and you're susceptible to other competitive pressures. I suggest identifying why you are different and let your customers know it. Now, you don't have to make the announcement with a bullhorn, but let them know how you are uniquely positioned to solve their problem. And once you do that, you can exploit what makes your business different and you can blow past your competition. Number three, be the best. Be the best at what you do. If you are the best, success will follow, and so will customers. To be the best, it's not easy. It means never being satisfied with what you've done. It means continually improving yourself. It means looking inward. Jim Hardy, he's a PhD. He said this in an Inc. Magazine article that I read. He said this, ask yourself, are you currently the person who would attract the level of success you seek? Your conditions, he says, are a reflection of your inner reality. In the article, Dr. Hardy, he also quotes James Allen. He says, your circumstances reveal you to yourself. 
So my suggestion is to be the best and remember the words from Jim Rome, work hard at your job and you can make a living. Work hard on yourself and you can make a fortune. Number four, be a great salesperson. You know, I don't know a successful entrepreneur who isn't a good salesperson. As a matter of fact, I believe a person's level of success in life and in business is directly proportional to the level of their communication or their sales skills. You know, when you're good at sales, you can be more in charge of your life and you can do the things that you want, that you really want to do. Learning to sell, it's going to open up possibilities that you never knew existed. So what makes what makes a great salesperson? Well, a great salesperson is empathetic. They're well-prepared. They're relationship-driven. They're competitive. They're creative. They're curious. And they're a good listener. They're also goal-driven. You know, we are all salespeople to some extent. Some of us are just better than others. People who take the time to learn sales skills often enjoy much more fulfilling careers and personal lives. It makes sense to learn how to sell. And if you're in business, you're always going to sell. You're always going to have to sell. And if you are behind the counter and you're selling to a customer who walks in your store, you're selling. If you're getting on the phone and you're calling a supplier, you're still selling. Learn sales skills, please. Number five, work with a mentor or business coach. Now, before I tell you why every entrepreneur, every single entrepreneur should have a mentor or a business coach, let's define the difference between the two. Coaches, they're strictly business. Their mission, it's clearly defined and they focus on that mission. A mentor, well, they almost always develop a more personal relationship with the person they're mentoring. They may also, and usually I've seen this happen, they mostly take a rounded or what we'll say a holistic view and they look at factors beyond that business. And when you work with either, whether it's a mentor or a business coach, you only want to work with someone who's walked the walk, talks the talk. You're looking for a seasoned pro who's achieved a high level of expertise in the area that they're going to be focusing on. And that person, well, they can help you avoid rookie mistakes that, you know what, we all make rookie mistakes no matter how long we've been in business, but they can help you to avoid at least most of them. They can also be a good sounding board. They can help you create a strategy for your business. They can help you set up a financial plan. And I'm going to mention it again. You can look out for your business and personal interest because that's what they're going to do. Now, I do recommend and will always recommend working with somebody who started or been involved at a high level in, in multiple businesses. And I kind of said that in the opening here. And it's hopefully going to be in a similar industry. But what's most important is only work with somebody you trust 100%. Number six, plan. You know, over the years, I've learned to appreciate the value of a good plan. And I learned it. I learned it the hard way. I learned you can't wing it. You know, a good plan, it helps you to identify your goals and prepare for your future. But it's also important to understand that a plan is, it's not set in stone. It's going to evolve over time as your business grows. Now, I suggest creating a plan with your business coach and mentor or some other key advisor like, like an attorney or, or maybe you have an accountant. And at some point, you may want to involve employees in the planning process. But regardless, if you do that, that or not, if they're not involved or they are involved, you've got to communicate that plan to your employees because you want every single one of them on your team on that same page working towards a common shared purpose. Now, if everyone in the company doesn't know what's working, if they don't know what's going on, if they don't know what you want to achieve, leaders, they're not going to know what to focus their efforts on. The employees won't know. So I suggest putting a high value on planning. It's something as I started, as I did say, it's something that I did learn over time. And it's something that I did learn. You just can't wing it. You've got to plan it out. And planning, I think to me anyway, whenever I've done, I've sat down and created a plan, it opens my eyes to new possibilities. Number seven, if you don't love what you do, do something else. Now, I could say life is too short to do something you don't love, but I know you probably heard that old saying, what, a hundred times, a thousand times? You know, while I do believe that's true, though, I'll just say if you're working a business that you don't love, you're not going to put 100% of yourself into that business. And it's not fair to your customers and it's not fair to your employees. And it's really not fair to you or your family because the value of your business and your legacy is going to diminish over time. 
Now, I've seen too many businesses fail because a business owner had fallen out of love with his or her business, and they allowed themselves to be distracted. And I've seen business owners, and I've seen hundreds of business owners, I've seen business owners go from full-time to part-time because they tell themselves that all, that it is all, that is all the effort that their business needs. And I've seen apathetic business owners justify joining boards and clubs by saying membership in those organizations is important to their business when it was really just an excuse to pass time. You know, if you don't love what you do, if you've lost that hunger, if you're no longer motivated, well, get out. That's just what I'm going to tell you. You're not doing yourself or anyone any good. You're just wasting your time. And I know there are people out there going to say, well, I'm making some money or I'm making a lot of money. So I'm just going to milk this sucker. I'm going to milk this business. So, you know, I'm not going to listen to that part. I do like my business or I want to be in that business because I'm making money. But you don't love it. You're not going to grow. And over time, it's going to fail. Over time, it's going to diminish. As I said, it's going to go down. To me, number seven is important. Love it or leave it. Well, there you go, folks. I've just given you seven rules, seven hustle rules that every entrepreneur should follow. And these rules are all important. I've seen the effects, the impact of these rules over time on hundreds of businesses. And I don't know many people that can actually say that. But when you run a chain of business to business magazines, and you run it for years, and you meet and get the chance, the opportunity to talk to hundreds and hundreds of business owners, yeah, you're going to hear all this stuff. You're going to hear it. You're going to know what's true. You're going to know what the pattern is. You're going to just see it. It's going to be clear as the no on your face. So I am saying, yeah, follow these seven rules, these seven hustle rules. If you want to be successful, if you don't want to follow these rules, well, good luck to you. Well, that's all I got for you today, folks. I hope that you enjoyed listening to me here on Side Hustle Rules. I do have in the description box of this video, I do have a free Side Hustle Starter Kit. It's a basic kit, but what it does is it gives you the information that you need need if you want to start your very own side hustle. So check that out if you would, please. If you got any questions, have any comments, put them in the description box. I'm looking forward to reading everything, every single thing, every single thing that you have to say. Well, as I like to say, and I want to say, good luck to you on your business. I'm looking forward to working with you. I'm looking forward to having you watch our videos, and I'm looking forward to your comments. Have a great day, everybody. Come on! Thank you.